Hey everybody, it's Matt Chu from Upright Health. And if you have been struggling with pain and this weird sensation near your sternum and in your ribs or underneath your pec, and it just feels like it's gotta be something wrong with my ribs or the ligaments or the tendon, then you're gonna wanna watch this video. So I was just talking with a client, Ben, who I've worked with and, and some of the other guys I've worked with for a while. And what he was telling me was all the things with his hips have gotten a lot better. He first came to us because his hip pain was bad and he's really worried about that. That's all better. And now he's just thinking about what's going on with this little spot here on his rib cage where the ribs meet the sternum. And he's thinking, is this costochondritis? Is this whatever inflammation of something is this a tendon is this a ligament and it's a really common story that we've heard people tell us over and over and over again i've heard it so many times over the last 13 or 14 years i used to also have some aches that went right here which was really clearly along um, the line of a certain muscle which we'll talk about shortly and for me and for pretty much every client we've seen in the last 13 years, 14 years, the problem is not with the bone. In fact, I would again remind you to always think muscles because when you're thinking about bones, bones really don't generate that much pain. Like you can slam them, you can punch knuckles into each other. It doesn't really give you that much discomfort when you have an unpadded bone and you're just sort of like whacking at it, it's not really that big of a deal. You don't normally feel bones aching, but what you do feel is muscles that are attaching tendon, ligament, whatever. Any of the soft tissue that binds bones together has the potential to give you sensations and to give you feelings that you don't like. And when we go a step further with all that, you wanna remember that muscles have the ability very clearly to give you pain. So when you use your muscles a lot, they can get really sore and stiff. When you use them too little, they can also get sore and stiff. And so where people get caught up, especially if you've got this kind of rib cage pain and inflammation, is you will rest and rest and rest and rest and rest and rest and rest and, rest and think that eventually this will get better, but it won't get better because the problem isn't because you're using it too much. The problem is because you're using these muscles too little. So I'm going to show you two exercises that you can do. I've had, I'm having Ben do these and I've had Nick who's in Switzerland now uh, do these. Nick, if you're out there watching this, drop a little note in the comment section and, and let us know how you're doing. I hope you are killing it in Switzerland or Italy, wherever you are now. Anyway, if you don't use the pec muscles, you don't use the chest muscles enough, then what's gonna happen is they start to complain, they get sore, they atrophy, and then when you go to use them to do anything, they're so weak that they give you sharp pains. So we need to make sure these muscles work well, and I'm gonna show you one simple way you can do it using some bands that you just get and attach to anything at home, and then the other way is a modified push-up. So first, here we go. I've got these orange bands. They are just attached to the balcony rail here. And you can see I've got these orange bands coming. I just grab one end of each side and then I'm just gonna come forward like this. And the hand position, I personally like to have thumbs up, um, but I will play around with this. So the reason I like to have thumbs up is because this makes it so that the pec muscles have to work a little bit more than if I go like this. If I go thumbs forward and palms down, now my biceps are able to help during this motion and I don't really want them, well, sometimes I might want them to be doing that, but when I'm really trying to get the pecs, I wanna have my thumbs up or even sometimes turning them so the thumbs are back. And then I can focus on bringing my hands in front of me. I like working on this position where I'm, I'm gonna turn so you can see where my hands actually are getting behind me so that the pec muscle is stretched out a nice amount. And then I'm not only improving the range of motion, but I'm improving the end range of motion. So the actual amount of range of motion that I have. And then you can do this exercise using circles in either direction. You can do this with just horizontal reps here. So horizontal adduction, adduction, 
and that'll help you get the pec muscles working. You want to be feeling them all across here. So they attach all along here and then out to the side of the top of your arm. Another thing uh, that can be helpful to, to really get more towards the middle of the chest is to actually have it so that you're working in this orientation so that you're in the short range of the, the pec's abilities, right? It's short range here, and then you're gonna be doing those same circles or horizontal adduction. Now you can also play around with elevation of your hand. Um, so you can do this one arm at a time, but if I'm doing it with two arms, then I can be going up higher here, right? The same things, I could be going horizontal adduction, I could be doing circles, I could be trying to bring it up way high. If you come up here, you're gonna find that there are some gnarly spots up here that are often super, super stiff and tight. I know they really get stiff on me after I spend a couple days surfing and if I don't stretch, I get all kinds of tightness through the rib cage. So, so that's how you do that. So you, you're doing sets of between 30 and 60 seconds. Um, I used to, I just like to either count to like 50, 60, or even 100, or if I'm short on time, I'll just do 15, 20, right? But just set a timer if that's easier for you, count, start feeling those muscles working. And as those muscles start coming online, then you can follow it up with a simple body weight exercise, which is the push up, but we can modify it a little bit so that you are getting ready and properly ready for doing a real push up. A lot of people don't do push ups well, so if you just jump right into a real push up, you're probably going to do it wrong. All you need to do is get down on the floor. If you're on a really hard surface, you want, might want to use a mat like I'm using right here. And by mat, I mean one of these and not me. Unless you have a really good friend named Matt who's really helpful in that way. So you're going to be down on the floor like this. Start on your knees, please. Your hands, you can have your um, middle fingers parallel to one another, or you can even turn them out a little bit so that they're angled out to the sides. And when you come down into this, in this version of the push-up, I'm gonna have you let your elbows go out to the side. So instead of keeping them tucked in like this and being a more tricep dominant push-up, I'm gonna have you let your elbows flare out to the side so that you can work on using the pecs a little bit more. Now, the reason I'm having you start on your knees is because you probably need to start easier. If you're constantly having soreness and irritation in the chest, around your chesticles, if you will, then you're probably pretty weak there and you need to start easy. So another thing you can do, since you may be too weak to do even that, is to have an elevated surface. So you could use yoga blocks, you could use your couch, um, use whatever you got so that there's an elevation difference and that your hands are higher than your knees, and then you do that push-up. So this will effectively make the push-up a lot easier. Okay, and then just make sure you're focusing on feeling pec muscles. You'll definitely still feel your arms working. That's normal, it's a push-up. And focus on getting the chest working. So sets of five to 10 will be really good here. Start at the low end when you first start and then work your way up and just doing two to three sets of that every single day even just doing that across the day can be really helpful for waking up your chest muscles again so they're not so weak uh, back when i was younger when i was in high school i realized i was so weak at one point that i was unable to even do 10 push-ups and so what i did at that point to fix that was i just did however many push-ups i could throughout the day. So in the morning, I might do like three push-ups and be really sad. It actually started at like one push-up. Uh, anyway, then three push-ups, and then maybe after lunch, three push-ups. And then when I got home from school and I'm just wandering around the house, not knowing what to do with myself, maybe I do six push-ups, right? Just sprinkling them throughout the day so your body knows that you're gonna need to do push-ups. Like that's, that's a great way to teach your body that you need the ability, you need the strength, you need the muscle to, to be able to do this thing because you're constantly doing it. So 
If you want to be more rigid about it, then I would say do two to three sets every day. If you're going to do it every morning, that's fine. And I would start off with uh, doing some of the band work that I showed you just to get warmed up, get the muscles working, do one to two sets of, of those to wake up your chest and then rest a little bit and then come back down to the floor and then start doing these modified easier push-ups. And then over time, you can of course start going to your feet and start working on doing, you know, full push-ups and all that stuff. So when you're at that point, it's pretty unlikely that you're gonna have that severe weakness and irritation that you've got right now. So hopefully these ideas help you. The last thing I like to hear is that people are just surrendering to aches and following this very outdated medical thought process where if it hurts, it must be inflamed or broken and therefore you just don't use it. When the reality is based on everything that I've ever seen in my life with my body and with the bodies of clients, the reality is if you don't use it, you lose it. So you need to use it in order to get that ache or that pain to go away. Your body is screaming for attention and screaming for movement, not screaming for you to allow more atrophy. In the long run, if you're not moving, the only time you're really, really not moving is when you're dead. Take your aches and pains as a sign that your muscles need your help and go get moving. I hope you found this helpful. If you are looking for a do-it-yourself program to help yourself with your hip mobility or shoulder stuff or back pain, whatever it is, check out uprighthealth.com slash DIY. Link will be in the description box. And if you liked this, subscribe to the channel. If you have a question about anything here, just go ahead and drop a comment and I will try to answer your comment. At some point I'm busy and I'm also enjoying beautiful sunsets out here. So when I get a chance. And as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.